Hi, everyone. My name is Stephen Moyes, and I'm a program manager working on the React Native team at Microsoft. Uh, today, I'm joined by the lovely Kiki St. Ange, who is one of my peers also working on React Native. Hi, I'm Kiki St. Ange. I work on the WinUI and the React Native for Windows and Mac effort. Uh, let's hand it back to Stephen, who's going to talk about our agenda today. All right, let's get rolling. So today, we're going to talk about three main topics. The first topic is how React Native fits into the overall landscape of technologies that you can use to build your applications. Then I'm going to hand it back to Kiki to go through a demo of how you can build a RSS feed app uh, using React Native. And finally, I'll close it out by talking about the Fluent UI React Native component library, uh, which is a component library that you can use to help uh, accelerate your React Native application. Now, we know you have a bunch of different options to choose from when you're building an application. Choosing which tech to use really depends on a number of factors. For example, are you going to build a native application that targets specific devices and operating systems? Native apps usually have the best user experiences, great performance, and accessibility built in, but the trade-off is breadth. On the other side, websites can run on anything in a browser. React Native really sits in the sweet spot relative to these technologies because React Native lets you write JavaScript and TypeScript to make native applications that target multiple platforms. Now, the React Native framework was originally built by Facebook to enable them to target uh, Android and iOS and share a bunch of code for their mobile application. At Build 2019, we announced that Microsoft would add support for React Native to target Windows devices. Since then, we've partnered with teams both within Microsoft and across the industry to build great experiences that use React Native. This year, I'm excited to announce that Microsoft is expanding React Native to support macOS as well. We found that many of the features that you'd come to expect when building a Windows application are the same as that you would expect building a macOS application. So we're excited to share that we're building first-class support for macOS. Now, when I said that React Native helps you build a native application, what does that mean? When you create a new, a new React Native project, it creates project templates for each desired platform. On Windows, for example, you get a new Visual Studio solution. On macOS, you get an Xcode project. However, on top of all of these different native projects is a React Native layer that uses JavaScript and TypeScript. Most of your business logic and your shared UI components will live in this React Native layer. Now, when I talk about React Native for Windows or React Native for Mac, I'm really talking about this whole vertical column. It's all the way from the JavaScript layer at the top through the native layer at the bottom. These aren't separate projects. You can think of them as new endpoints that you can deploy to. They're not competing with React Native. They're adding to React Native. Now, let me drive it home with an example. Here, we've got a picker component. This picker component allows you to choose a color. It's a very simple picker component in React Native. But the cool thing is that depending on which platform you're running on, the visualization of the picker component changes. So on iOS, for example, you'll see a very familiar dial-like picker component that looks very natural on an iOS device. On Android, you'll get a material design picker component. You can see the bloom animation when you tap on the, on the dropdown. And on Windows, you get a pointer-centric, really productive, fluent picker component that's built on the combo box that's found within the platform. So even though the same picker code is, is shared between all of these different endpoints, the actual visualization of the picker control and the user experience of the control is uh, natural on each device that you're running on. Within Microsoft, we have a number of application suites like Office and Xbox that are taking really big bets on React Native. Additionally, enterprises and consumer apps like Axie, Plex, and Facebook Messenger are also using React Native for Windows to expand their reach beyond mobile and to drive their business forward on desktop. Why are these businesses betting big on React Native? It's for three main reasons. React Native builds a native application for you under the covers meaning it has a great user experience, it has accessibility built in, and it feels natural on each device that it's deployed to. Secondly, the app is native, which means it has native-like performance. 
it runs super, super speedy on each platform that you deploy to. Finally, React Native has a web-like developer experience, including live reload, so you can see your changes instantly after saving, as well as an active and engaged developer community and a wide variety of community modules that you can incorporate into your application. Now let's take a look at a specific example. This is the Xbox beta app on PC. Notice the beautiful user experience, including animations, multimedia, videos, and performance is also super snappy. The Xbox app initially explored using Electron, but found that React Native helped them make a super performant app with a great user experience. In their tests, the Xbox team found that memory consumption went from 1.6 gigs to 300 megs. CPU usage spikes went from 50% down to 30%. These are quite impressive numbers, and users are really taking notice. In a survey, the team found that over 95% of users have noticed that the app's performance is the same as or better than before. And not only that, but the team was able to port their entire app from Electron into React Native in a very short number of months using very few devs. This really speaks to the developer productivity gains that you get using React Native. Speaking of performance, the React Native team at Microsoft is dedicated to ensuring that your apps feel super snappy on each device that they're deployed to. One area of note is JavaScript engines. We're working on adding Hermes support to React Native for Windows and have found initial success. Hermes is a performing about 13% better than the Chakra engine in our initial tests of memory impact. And now I wanna show you how the word application is using React Native to represent a persona card within their Win32 Word app. Now this is a technical demo, but this really shows the power of using React Native inside other platforms as well, such as Win32. So here's the video. We're gonna launch Word, and then we're gonna click on the avatar representing Herald. Now, the window that pops up is all React Native. The contents in here is built using JavaScript and TypeScript. And this is quite noteworthy because that means that this content can be used and shared across multiple apps and multiple platforms. Pretty cool. And now I hope you're excited to get started with React Native. I'm going to pass it over to Kiki to show you how you can use React Native to build an RSS feed application. Great. So let's take a look at the app that we're actually going to be spending our time building today. Uh, the app that we have is an RSS feed reader application built entirely in React Native, and it runs on three different platforms, Windows, Mac, and the Surface Duo. The reason I chose a rather simple app to show you how to build is because I want to focus more on the developer experience and walk through the steps end to end. So from initial installation, you have nothing installed yet, all the way through to running this on a Windows and Mac and a Surface Duo emulator. So it's a little bit uh, of, of a trip here because we're going to be starting essentially from nothing and, and running on many different devices at the end. But the, the point here is to highlight how easy it is to do that using React Native. Additionally, at the end of this demonstration, we'll obviously be showing this all running on all three devices, but I want to add a a few extra finishing touches uh, to highlight how easy it is when using React Native components and when you install the right modules to just sort of set up and use native UI and how that looks on different platforms and how it really feels at home there. Um, and how you don't need to access any native code to get that native UI when developing with React Native. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the two main features we're going to be building today, the finishing touch that we're going to show you at the end running on all three different devices, and then we'll get started installing everything. So this is the app. It's a pretty simple two column uh, layout app. You have your web view uh, control over here on the right, and you have your native UI RSS feed parser over here on the left. The little bit of native code that we're going to be writing at the end of this is this reload button up here. When we press that, it pops up a native dialogue. And dialogues are very unique depending on the system that you're on. People brand, uh, this is branded very heavily. And so this is a Windows dialogue. I can, I can tab to the different options. It's, it's got my uh, focus captured here and it's not allowing me to like dismiss. So when I click off of it, 
I have to interact with this module. So this is the standard alert component that we'll be writing at the very end. So, and the other two are this web view component, which is uh, actually accessing the native uh, WinUI web view in the case of Windows uh, and, the, and the native web view that is used in, in uh, on a Mac device as well, which we'll show you how to install and link. And then over here on the left, we have the JavaScript based component. So when it's written purely in JavaScript, it's uh, just rendering the native UI as closely as it can, but it's not actually interfacing with any uh, native APIs there. So we'll be showing how to set these two things up, set up your layup, install everything, and, and then we'll show everything running at the end. The first thing we're going to do is npx react native init and then the name of your project. So in this case, I'm going to call it RSS feed reader. And I'm going to select a version. I'm going to kick this off. So what this is going to do is it's going to install React Native locally. And this is going to take a little bit to get set up. So we're going to go ahead and wait. <laughs> and we'll get back to you once this is installed. Everything's been installed. And the next step is to just go right into that directory that you just created. So we're going to do cd rss feed reader. I'm going to clear the screen again. Uh, no, so it doesn't actually matter what device that you're developing on, you can install all of the prerequisite uh, extensions that you want. So we can install Windows first, we can install Mac first, but uh, it doesn't matter that I'm running on a Windows device right now. So what I'm going to do, npx react native Mac OS, and I'm actually going to install the Mac OS one first, and we'll show you what that looks like. So we'll, we'll also, uh, after we're done with this, we'll show you the same installation steps on a Mac because we want to highlight that this is, the process is very similar, if not the same. Um, but I also wanted to show you that you can install both of them uh, when you first create your project, and it doesn't really matter. Cool. So Mac is installed. So if we go dir and look at our directory, we will see the Mac OS uh, folder is installed. And what we're actually going to do is go ahead and install the Windows one, and then we'll take a look at that folder file structure to see what we actually just spent all this time waiting for. So next we're going to do, I'm going to clear the screen, npx react native windows in it. So you'll notice it's very similar. We're going to kick that off and it's going to run a very similar process, but instead of installing the Mac OS extension for react native, it's going to be installing the windows one. Again, we're going to wait a little bit for this. Windows one is all installed. Let's clear the screen and again, take a look at our directory. And we will see down here, we have Windows installed. Go back here. And it actually told me right uh, at the top, oh, I cleared my screen. But it told me in order to run the app that you just created, you can do uh, npx react native run dash windows. And that will kick off the first build of the Windows project. So if I did run dash Mac OS and I was on a Mac device, it would kick off the build for that. So let's get that started. And the first build is always going to be a little bit long because it has to do all the initial uh, linking and compiling. And then the subsequent builds after that will be pretty quick. So let's get that started and then we'll get back to you uh, after that's done. Cool. So the app has finished building. It is now attempting to launch. So it's uh, loading all my JavaScript, uh, which is part of the default template right now because I haven't written anything yet. But once this is all done and hooked up and connected to my remote debugger on my browser, I'm going to get an app that looks like this. And when you first install React Native, you get a blank template app that has some something preset up in the app.js file, which is telling you to edit right here. And that's just sort of helped get you started in an understanding of how React Native apps are structured. So let's take a look at the, the app.js file that we have over here. There's a lot of, of stuff set up in here, but we're actually going to strip a lot of this out because we're going to be writing our own app today. So before I launch in and show you how to do the exact, exact same steps on a Mac, uh, I just want to highlight sort of uh, one of the nice features that you get from from React Native, which is called uh, Live Reload. So when you make changes, like let's say I want to make all of these header files much larger, I can make changes on the fly. Let's set this to 64. Hit Control S or Save, 
And after uh, just one cycle or two to connect to my debugger, I get those changes seen automatically. So I can edit text. I can add more components like this. I can do all kinds of stuff just on the fly automatically. And it'll automatically update that. Now that we've seen this uh, running on a Windows device and sort of the basic setup for that, and this is set up to develop both a Mac and a uh, Windows app, Let's go over to a Mac device and show you these same steps to get you set up if you want to develop in a Mac developer ecosystem. So here we are in our Mac terminal, and we're going to do npx react native init, and we're going to call this project uh, RSS reader. And we're going to select a version and then kick off that initial installation of, of react native, which will take a bit. Once that is done, we're going to move into the source directory do cd rss reader uh, and then we are going to install the mac os extension so that is npx uh, react native mac os init and then we're going to kick off that installation which will also take a little bit to install the extension once that's installed we're actually have to auto link the project so we're going to move into the mac os directory that we just installed and do pod install I'm going to let that run, and the linking will probably take the shortest time out of all of this process so far. Once that's installed, we're going to move back out of that directory and start start our project. So we're going to do uh, we're going to open up a separate terminal and do yarn start macOS and let the bundler get set up. And once that graph is done, we're going to go back to our source directory and do npx react native run macOS, and that's going to take a second because it has to. Uh, finish the initial build, which for every new project takes a bit. Once that's done, uh, we have the default React Native template. So let's do some, some editing of this and show you what live reload looks like uh, in Mac. So we're going to open up Visual Studio Code. And right as step one says, we're going to go to app.js and edit some of that text right under the, the header there. So let's shrink that so that we can actually see what we're coding. And then right under step one, we're going to say, hello, from React, React Native for Mac OS. Hit save, and we'll see that in a cycle. And there we go. Let's move on. The next set of steps that we are going to do is install the WebView module. So that is separate. It doesn't come with core React Native when you install it, so you just uh, install it separately the way you would any web module uh, or uh, NuGet package today. So we're going to do yarn add React Native web view. I'm going to kick that off, and that might take just a minute or so to get fully installed depending on how big the package is. All right, we are fully installed. So actually where that went, just for uh, future reference, is if we look at the directory really quick and we look for the node modules folder, this node modules folder is where all of these separate packages uh, get installed and can be accessed. So let's clear screen again. If you were on a Mac uh, to link up this WebView module that you just installed, you would just do uh, pod install and then it would auto link it. We don't quite have that working yet for Windows, so we're going to have to just manually uh, link it, which doesn't take too much extra work. But it does require you to go into Visual Studio and access your project from there. So the first thing we're going to do is go into pch.h, and we're going to include the winner t React Native WebView. Save that. Go to the app.cpp, and right here under Package Providers, we're going to add another one. And if you were curious about running a React Native app from whatever native solution you have, project solution, whether that's Xcode or Visual Studio, uh, we'll just launch it right from here and show you that. 
So we'll go back to the command prompt and we do need to kick off via yarn start the Metro bundler, which is our debugger bundler that runs and gives us information if our JavaScript crashes or if uh, the connection between our debugger and our app is broken. Sweet. So crap is done and some information. So we are free to rebuild the project. Uh, once this is complete, it will show me that the JavaScript is compiling and then we will see our app. We'll see no changes for the time being because I'm going to show you how to hook up that new web view uh, component that we just installed. Cool. So uh, this was the app that the last state we left it at with the two column layout. So let us get started on actually adding the web view module. So what we're going to do is import web view from and then the name of the module is the same thing that you did when you did your add. So in this case, React Native Web View. Hit save. So we're just going to uh, paste a little bit of code that we're going to inject into the web view to give it so, so some automatic styling and a timeout functionality just in case it can't find the URL that we give it when we set it up. Then we're going to take out this text module and we're going to put in the web view. Projected JavaScript is going to get the run first. And the source gets. I'm going to hit save on that. Cool. Now we're going to go back to app.js. And in content screen, we are going to give it an URL. But first we need to set that base URL. Where do we want that to go? There we go. Set that up. This may have an issue because I am not providing this property with any values. So we're going to do URL. Let's save. And there we go. The web view is up and it is pulling the, the base page that I gave it, which in this case was blogs.windows.com. We are on to the final steps of what we need to install to get this app up and looking like the demo app we had in the very beginning. And that is to add the RSS uh, parser app, uh, module. So same process as we did with the web view. We're going to do yarn add react native RSS parser. Hit enter. That'll kick that off. Cool. That has all been installed, so let's clear screen. Let's do yarn start again. That will kick off our debugger. Cool. I'm just going to start it right from Visual Studio as I can. It is up and running. So the next thing to do is to import it and actually hook it up. Uh, to this app itself. So if you remember in the original demo that we showed in the very beginning, there were some cards and some and, and a list of information, which was uh, the RSS feed that was gathering information and putting it into styled components. So what we're going to do is actually create that card component. I'm going to create a folder over here called component. And I'm going to add to it card.js. So here we have a blank card. I'm going to copy over the card snippet. So we have some, some style sheet properties down here, but the, the main pro uh, meat of the card is just two nested styles. Now let's go to feed screen and actually import that card. So we'll do import 
card from opponent's opponent card.js. So that's in. And then we're going to set item information. So now we're going to set up the REST API for when you actually do click on one of those cards and then plumb that URL that is selected via the, the card back into the web view and refresh it. So we're going to define items and set RSS items. So this is just me defining some variables that we're going to use inside this function. Oops. Right. These square brackets. Wait on get RSS feed. So we're going to write this function in a second. So now let us write the get RSS feed function. So I'm going to write a response to fetch https://bogs.windows.com back feed. And we are going to wait for that response and get it back in form of text. I forgot to add the RSS the module that we just installed. So let's do that right now. Import star as RSS parser from React Native. And there we go. Cool. All right. So now we actually have an RSS parser to parse information from. So now we can parse the, the data. And we're going to call set RSS items, RSS items. So now this is performing the correct operations to grab the information and parse it into our local variable. Now let's define the on select for the item. Create another function. And we'll have an ID. Get all back. And we'll pass the ID to that. We now need to define the get callback URL on that the properties that you're, uh, which is a property that we're going to define on this feed screen back in app.js. And I that there. So we'll go back to app.js and we're going to define that get callback URL property from item. Now we're going to use this set URL that we defined up here. Data. Then get one from item. I don't want to get callback. It's URL. Control S. I 
forgot to make this an async function. Async. Try this. Reload. Cool. So now all the data has been uh, is being grabbed correctly. We actually just need to display it. So this is a styling syntax that we're going to build up right here. We're going to use a flat list and make sure that I am including it. So let's define this flat list. I do have this snippet already saved. Paste that in. So we're going to we're using a R card component that we defined as well as the item, which is the content within. And then the flat list is going to be iterating over the RSS items, which we've set up with this get RSS feed. So we're going to hit save. Set selected. State. And I actually think that I'm importing this React.U state. I am. So uh, just like with namespaces, you can define, you can set the whole namespace and then dot uh, the subclass that you want. But uh, if you've already been importing it, that's not necessary. All right. This shouldn't be const. Reload. And there we go. So our REST API is set up. A little bit of hiccup there for me trying to figure out that const variable. Our web view component is set up. And our RSS feed reader JavaScript component is also set up. So we are done. If we want to add some finishing touches and, and, and put in some more native UI, we could add something like the refresh button that we saw in the, in the first app. But before we dive too much into, uh, or before we look too much into that, let's actually just take this app and run it on other devices. Because one of the beautiful things about using React Native is the fact that you can build and use the same source code in one place on multiple different endpoints. And here we are. Now that we've gotten all of the modules installed and uh, set up in our JavaScript files, we can run the final app here on our Mac device. So as soon as this bundler is finished, we will have the complete app that we just wrote uh, up and running. Here we go, our finished app. You'll notice right off the bat that there are some visual differences because Mac is rendering the JavaScript components that we wrote uh, natively a, a little bit differently. So some of the colors, the shadows, and everything like that. But our REST API is all still hooked up. The WebView component that we have is using the native WebView equivalent on Mac, and everything's working the way it should. So before we finish uh, and wrap up here, let's do some finishing touches and show you some more native stuff that you can get working on here and how easy it is to set that up. I wanted to go back and highlight a few things that I mentioned in the very beginning before we started this building our app, which was that this app is truly native and that it can target a bunch of different devices and run there pretty smoothly. So what I'm showing you right now is a Android Duo emulator. And I've reduced the content just a little bit so we can see this side by side. I'm showing just the native UI information. And so just that left-hand column. So what we see is the RSS feeder, uh, feed reader app that we just wrote, but just the, the native UI content here on the left in our Windows app. And then over here on our Surface Duo emulator, we have the exact same app running uh, on an Android ecosystem. 
So to highlight that everything is truly native, I mean, first you can see right off the bat that the scrolling is a bit different, that the, the tiles themselves look a bit different, the spacing is different because it's a different device. So it, it's rendering those JavaScript components that we wrote differently because those components are translated down into their native equivalents. But to show you some of the cool ways that you can access these native APIs and, and, and see that native difference, we're actually going to create an, an, an alert here that's going to alert you when the feed refreshes. And on that alert, it's going to pop up a, a message dialog. So let's go to our feed screen, JavaScript, and pop in our alert function. Let's save that. And I'm going to go down here and add in uh, a little piece of touchable text. I'm going to say reload, yeah. And make sure touchable opacity is yes, imported. On press, it's going to get our feed refresh alert. I'm going to hit save on that. And we'll notice that when I hit this, we get a very familiar dialogue if you are an Android user, which is uh, this dialogue that we've specified in our feed refresh alert. But if I hit that same button on a Windows app, I'm going to get a very familiar Windows dialogue. So over here, you'll see the reload the app uh, situated in pretty much the exact same spot that I specified it. But when I press this, I'm going to get our Windows Fluent UI dialog, which is going to have the drop shadow and is going to be keyboard uh, accessible and all of that awesome stuff. And, and that's what we mean when we say they're native apps, is that when you write these JavaScript components, they're not 100% JavaScript. They get translated down into that layer. So this is an example of that. So lastly, as we've been doing throughout uh, this entire uh, demo, is we're going to show you this exact same process and show you the finished app running on a Mac. So as you can see here, we have the condensed feed running on our Mac device. Uh, you'll notice in the code behind this is set up exactly the same way that we had written it for both Android and Windows uh, just a few seconds earlier. And when I actually press this button, you'll see a very familiar dialog that you would recognize if you were on a Mac or iOS device. So thanks for sticking through it and watching us do the demo. And I look forward to seeing what you create in React Native for Windows and Mac. Back to you, Stephen. Awesome. Thanks, Kiki. Now let's talk about how you can use React Native and Fluent UI to create really productive experiences. In addition to bringing Windows and Mac OS support to React Native developers, Microsoft is also bringing the Fluent UI component library and design system to React Native. Fluent UI helps developers build experiences that feel natural on each device and are accessible to all. Fluent UI is already available for web and mobile developers, so we want to show you an early preview of how we're bringing Fluent UI to more devices and more developers using React Native. You can go to our public GitHub, shown on the screen, to see a preview version, and we welcome your feedback. Now let me give you an example. If you've ever used React Native's button, you know it's basically a custom view or a touchable, but you have to style it yourself. The Fluent UI Toolkit has a set of pre-styled buttons that look natural on each platform that you can either use as is or customize them for your needs. On Windows, though, users have a mouse and keyboard and expect mouse and keyboard support. So these styles include uh, features that help feel really natural on Windows. So let me show you what that looks like for mouse. Here, I'm going to hover over the button, and you'll notice that it changes colors. Let me show you what that looks like again. I'll move my mouse away and hover over again, and it changes colors. This feels really natural on Windows because it's really consistent with the Windows experience. Finally, accessibility and keyboard support are key parts of the Fluent UI system, so we have added support for keyboard-focused styles. Now, things like keyboard and mouse support probably aren't new for native Windows developers, but we want to make sure that React Native developers can build experiences that feel natural on every device. We hope you're excited to get started building React Native apps, 
Visit us at aka.ms slash React Native and join us on Twitter at React Native MSFT. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And thank you for presenting with me, Kiki. It's been my pleasure, Stephen. We're excited to see what you'll build. Stay safe out there. Bye-bye. Bye.